Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's actually Monday, but don't tell anybody. But you're watching this on Tuesday if you're a good child trying to spread this all out. I don't know. Like I said, we're making this stuff up as we go. Um, we're going to talk about Charles Law today. So let me switch over here. Charles Law is a second gas law we're going to look at. And it's named after a French balloonist named Jacques Charles. Hence the name Charles Law. Um, he was a physicist as well. We're not going to hold that against him. Charles Law states that the volume of a fixed gap mass of gas is directly proportional to its Kelvin temperature if pressure remains constant. Now, he's a balloonist. He's one of the guys who gets up in the hot air balloons. So he's interested in volume of the balloon and he's interested in temperature. That's it. That's all he's worried about. So it makes sense that he investigates this kind of stuff. And I don't know if you've ever been in a hot air balloon. I haven't because I'm afraid of heights because I know how big a hole I'd make in the ground if I fell out of one. Um, volume and temperature is how all this is. The hotter the, the gas is, the bigger the balloon gets. It's really not that complicated. But it's different. It deals with the Kelvin temperature. We're going to talk about that here in a second as to why. So volume divided by temperature when you start have to equal volume divided by temperature when you finish. Very similar to Boyle's law. What you have when you start has got to equal what you have when you finish. So there's a proportionality here. Now the Kelvin temperatures are used because they're always positive. You cannot have a negative number in the denominator. Doing so would give you a negative volume, which means you're violating the laws of conservation of matter, and now God is angry at you. Always a bad thing. You know, viruses get released, whatever. I don't know. Coffee! Um, you can't have zero in the denominator because that gives you an undefined fraction. So for this to work, the denominator, the temperature, always has to be positive. So again, Kelvin temperature is degrees Celsius plus 273. So if I tell you it's 10 degrees Celsius outside, that means it's 283 Kelvin. If I tell you it's minus 10 degrees Celsius outside, which is never going to happen here in El Centro, then it's 263 Kelvin. Okay, it's just addition. Barely need a calculator for it. The other thing to keep in mind here is that we have something called standard temperature and pressure. We talked about this before, but it's been a couple of weeks. STP is standard temperature and pressure. It's 273 Kelvin, zero Celsius, and either 101.3 kPa or one atmosphere, depending on the unit being used for the problem, for pressure. So the standard temperature is always zero Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Standard pressure is either one atmosphere or 101.3 kPa, kilopascals. You need to know this, write it down, you know, tattoo it on your hand in ink or something. I don't care, but you've got to know this, okay? Because it shows up all the time in the homework and on your tests, which I've still got to figure out how we're going to do, but we're, going to, we're still going to have a test on this stuff next week somehow. I don't know how. I'll figure it out. Buying myself some time here. So let's do an example. If I place a balloon in my refrigerator because you know I'm bored after being quarantined for four days, five days. So I'm sticking a balloon into my refrigerator because I'm, I'm going stir crazy, I guess. Initially, the balloon has a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius and a volume of 0.75 liters. What will the volume be when it reaches the temperature inside my fridge of four Celsius? So first thing you do, first thing, first, one, uno. Gotta do this first. It's really important. It doesn't seem like it, but trust me, it so much is. Change your temperatures from Celsius to Kelvin. So I've got 27 Celsius plus 273, that equals 300 Kelvin. And four, my final temperature, plus 273 is 277 Kelvin. Change the temperatures first. It will make your life so much easier. Hi, Bitsy. Chucklehead dogs is zipping through. So 
V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So here's what it looks like. You got 0.75 liters divided by 300 Kelvin, because we already did that math. We changed the temperature, put that on the bottom, equals a final volume that we don't know, divided by 277. <coughs> that means in order to get volume by itself, I've got to multiply 277 to both sides and bring it over to the other side. So 0.75 times 277 divided by 300 equals V2. You do the math, little song, little dance on your calculator, boom, you get 0.69 liters. Use the units. It's kind of like use the force loop, only you know with chemistry. Use the units. If you're doing volume, it's either going to be liters and milliliters. Whatever it starts with in the problem is what it's going to end with. Your temperatures should always come out in Kelvin because you converted them to Kelvin first. That's pretty much it for Charles Law. There's nothing else. So if you got questions, comments, complaints, whatever, put them online. Uh, you can always email me, reach me through Google Hangouts or through the classroom, whatever. If you get stuck, let me know. We'll figure it out, okay? And with that, I will see you in the next lesson. Bye, y'all.